it's Thursday and it is time for me to chat about a whole new book. In this vlog I am attempting to tick off the prompt for Muppet Christmas Carol which was a technically a free pick but also puppets because I really really wanted to pick up The Shadow Glass by Josh Winning and Oh, look at that cover. Can we just, like, how is that cover not just giving me everything that I would want from, like, an 80s film? And the answer to that is very much so yes. So this book is about Jack. And Jack's father created an amazing world. He was a director and he his most famous work was The Shadow Glass, which was a series very in the vein of Jim Henson and it was puppets. And his, it was a fantasy series in 1986 and life did not turn out quite as well as he would have hoped. So Jack's father, the director, struggles with alcohol and passes away. Jack then returns back to his childhood home to sort of, well, he's not doing well either. And he decides he's gonna go back to his family home and just sell, sell the merch for the shadow glass, make some money and try and get himself in a better place. However, turns out that those puppets are not just puppets. Those puppets come to life and they need his help. And it just sort of, throws Jack into this world that he had grown up with, with his dad being obsessed with the shadow glass and eerie, which is the world that these puppets lived in. And I am loving this book. I'm very, I'm very scared to say that I'm loving this book because this is my, I think, ninth book read this month and I've at least really liked every book that I have read so far and statistically I'm due for a duff book and I'm, I'm due I'm overdue but I feel like rereading favorites has kind of helped me a bit maybe I'm on book 10 I can't remember nine I don't know I'm very tired. I can't even remember how many books I've read this month so far, but I am currently, don't think that's even showing up. I am this far into the book. So I am on page 169 of a 400 page book and I only started it today. I am whizzing through it thus far. And I'm really liking the way that the chapters so far are alternating between chapter, here's some action that's happening. And then an extract from an interview, from a movie transcript, from a website, some sort of, something to do with the series, or sorry, not the series, to do with the show of the shadow glass, because it then gives that explanation so that the characters don't have to sort of explain things and everything sort of is, it makes sense. And I am, loving this world and it just it's making me feel nostalgic because I love the never-ending story it is one of my favorite childhood films that I as an adult still watch regularly I also read that book till my copy fell apart and now I own a newer copy that has not fallen apart and I love that the second never ending story I still love, but not as much. But the first one, ha! Huh, I also love Legend. So puppets, very much just something that it's so nostalgic for me to have something be about a fantasy world filled with puppets. And there are points in this book where I fear that the baddies in this book are a little bit like Skeksis from Dark Crystal. And I don't like Dark Crystal because as an adult, I still sometimes have nightmares about those itty bitty ribcage guys and and they scare me. Um, so Dark Crystal is excellent, but terrifying. So that's why I don't like it. 
but puppets very much into it and I just didn't realise how much I craved that nostalgia for a fantasy world with puppets and it turns out I really really did and I'm just loving this book so far. I don't think Jack is a likeable character but it's not about him, it's about him sort of dealing with his childhood, with his relationship with his father and about the world of Eerie and the puppets and I'm just, it's a nostalgic wild ride. It is turning into, so it, I've just gotten to the stage where we're going on a quest. I love a good quest and I'm just loving the puppet characters because they have personalities, they are warriors and they're just, they take no nonsense and I love that. I also love that this book has got a character called Toby who is the ultimate fanboy who loves Shadow Glass. He has like a group where they meet up and they chat about how amazing the Shadow Glass as a franchise was and I think that that is really just enhancing this book because Jack is kind of wanting to shy away from his past, from his dad's legacy but Toby is like hi I'm your dad's biggest fan and I'm kind of loving their dynamic because I think Jack kind of needs a friend and I'm hoping Toby can be that friend but I am hoping to read a little bit more of this book. I'm probably in all honesty I'm probably gonna get to maybe halfway through this evening it's another super chilly night and we've got some snow so I think that that is perfect sitting in bed reading weather. I'm gonna do that and then let you know when I get a little further through. Oh, I'm so scared that I'm not gonna love this book entirely because I don't want to jinx myself but I'm absolutely loving it so far. I feel like there should be like a Lamal soundtrack going on in the background as I read the pages and I could probably just provide that soundtrack for myself. I might. <laughs> I have finished The Shadow Glass. I finished it this morning. It was not my plan to finish it this morning because my plan was to finish it tomorrow. So last night I got up to page 314.15 and my plan was that I was gonna read a teeny bit in the morning and then leave myself 50 pages or so to read tonight and tomorrow morning because we are pretty busy this weekend. We're actually celebrating Christmas tomorrow, well early Christmas, our festive soiree where we have a table full of beige and our families come and it's really quite lovely. Um, so there's not the hugest amount of time for reading this weekend but I, I read my chapter this morning and then the book kind of had a hold on me and was like oh it was really oh it just everything was kicking off and I I didn't want to put it down so I decided I was just going to start work today at nine. I work flexi time so I can start any time between half seven and ten Although I usually start between, you know, eight and half eight. So a little bit of a later start for me today because I had to finish this book. I had to see what was going on. And I absolutely loved this book. I don't remember who recommended this book to me, but whoever you are, I, I am truly grateful because this book just, it gave me so much that I didn't know I was looking for. I didn't know that I needed a nostalgic trip and just a fantasy quest. I mean, I always want a fantasy quest, but I didn't know that I needed that sort of element of nostalgia that just made me think of all of those 80s films that I love. So like Labyrinth, The Never Ending Story, not Dark Crystal. I hate Dark Crystal. It's scary. It's too scary. Too scary for kids. I, I shouldn't have watched it. I still, I'm still terrified of that film and I am 36 and a half and it still scares me. I think this is a very niche kind of book. I think that if you love a very small sort of section of 80s films that involve 
fantasy quests and puppets and Jim Henson, then I think that you may love this book or you might get annoyed that it is describing a film that doesn't exist and you want that film to exist because I really want that film to exist. But I think that it it really just hit me in that sort of nostalgic way and just, yeah, it it just, it was what I needed and I didn't know I needed it. And I absolutely loved the puppet characters. I loved them. They were fierce warriors. They took no nonsense, but they they cared about each other. And I loved the relationship between the puppets. And I loved the way that the humans actually tried to get the puppet heroes to actually respect them or view them as a bit more than a man child. Um, I, I loved them. I loved them so much. And the human characters, the main character, Jack, ah, he was fine. He was fine, but I feel like he wasn't important to the majority of the story, which was quite good because he was, ah, he wasn't my favourite. But I liked that he actually grew as a character. He sort of clearly was grieving for not just the loss of his father, because of his death but like the loss of his father who just wasn't really active in his life and I think that I did grow to like Jack towards the end but you know when you're reading a book and you know it's a fantasy book there are battles there's gonna be some casualties I would have been okay if Jack was a casualty I would have gotten over it that's sort of how I felt about him but then he sort of I grew to respect him as a character but he still wasn't one of my favourites. I thought it was quite funny the way that there was an age-appropriate woman in the book and he was just convinced that she was into him and I thought that that was just oh, get over yourself Jack. But I really like that this book sort of gave me a fantastical story but also little bits of dealing with grief and the importance of like your family whether it's your blood relatives or your found family and as a person who loves a story with a found family I was here for that. I think that this book actually gave me like some warm and fuzzies which I wasn't expecting. I went into this not really being sure of what I was going to get other than that cover is amazing. Obviously I'm not judging a book by its cover, I did, but <laughs> I wanted a fun story with puppets that came to life and I didn't dare to dream that it would be as beloved by me as the films that were referenced in the sort of the blurbs but it, it really was. I I love this. I want to go and watch this film. I want to watch The Shadow Glass but it doesn't exist and I'm kind of sad about that because it was taking all of the elements of so many films that I just love and just put them all in the book and I think that that was why I loved it so much was because it drew references from so many pop culture moments that make me happy and I have good memories of and it put them all in a book but set the book in London so I was like oh that's you know that's my world and it was an unlikely hero an unlikely band of friends not even friends band of humans just plop together and they set out to achieve something that you know the chances of that pretty slim but it was unlikely heroes and I I really liked that the baddies in this book were now I I'm terrified of Dark Crystal and I feel like the baddies in this were a little bit too close to Skeksis for my liking but that just made them all the more terrifying and I really feel like the moment that that evil queen inhaled a man. I knew that we were in for some a scary scary ride and I feel like that really worked. I wasn't 100% sure of what the end goal was for the baddie but I didn't care because it was a fantasy story with a big bad automatically you sort of go on the side of the good. 
maybe with a little bit of chaos, but ultimately rooting for the goodies. And it was very clear that the baddies were baddies and the goodies were goodies. And that just, it was so enjoyable. And I had mentioned before that after every chapter or two, there were little pauses where there would be interviews, extracts of interviews of articles, things like that. And I feel like that was really important because that helped to further explain points in the book without, you know, just trying to wedge it in. And those sort of extracts really just helped to give a more sort of fleshed out world and answer some questions that otherwise there would have been some pretty big plot holes. And I just think it was such a cleverly written book that it got me in the nostalgic feels. I felt like there should have been a synth soundtrack going on and I got everything I dared to dream I would have gotten from a fantasy book with puppets. I loved it. I also feel like the world building in this book was fantastic. So the book takes place in London, in the UK, in modern day, but the puppets are all from a place called Eerie and that place is very much your sort of classic 80s fantasy world and it was just explained and built so beautifully in this book that I really felt like I'd gotten a picture of it in my mind and I just oh I'm absolutely just heartbroken that this does not exist as a film because the the book is all about the puppets that were in a film called The Shadow Glass and they're looking for the shadow glass and there are references back constantly to the film but that film is a creation in this book the film does not exist and I will forever be sad about that so if people who make films would like to make a lovely film then then I would like I would like this film made with these puppets. That would be great. <laughs> so that was, I mean, I, I'm always very conscious that in December I throw five star ratings around quite easily, but I think I do that most months. I'm pretty happy to just, if I feel a book deserves five stars, I'm, I'm giving it five. I don't think I'm, well I'm not feeling overly festive so I don't think I'm being overly generous with my ratings but maybe I am. Who who knows? And I don't really care because I feel like I would give this book five stars at any time of the year because it's those nostalgic references that are just so particular that I want, that I, I love and I, I love this book. So yeah, it's getting five stars for me and I'm so happy about that. So now that it's it's only Friday afternoon and I have to have my ring light on because it is pitch black outside because we have snow and ice. Um, so I am going to pick up another book for tonight and tomorrow morning before the whole soiree begins um, because I have early access to the new Nikki Bell book which is a novella Scottish romance that comes out tomorrow and it's only little so I'm very confident that despite having a lot of things going on this weekend I've got time to finish it. I don't really remember the title of it. I want to say it's raising the alarm but I think I'm wrong. I'm gonna pop up a picture somewhere um, of the front cover because I have forgotten it. My mind has gone blank um, but it is a second chance romance set in a police station in Ayr in Scotland and the two main characters, so dual narrative, uh, the two main characters dated when they were younger and they haven't seen each other for 10 years. So now they have to work together and you know what I want to happen. Um, I'm very, very excited to read this. I think it's going to be a nice little reset of a book because I've just finished something fantasy. I don't want to then go and read another thing that's sort of otherworldly. I want to pop myself back in reality for a little bit to 
just a short little dip my toes in the water of real life <laughs> that's not a thing um just a little bit of reality but make it a festive and romantic reality that's what I'm hoping for and I'm oh this will be my third book by this author and I'm pretty certain that I'm gonna get what I want so here's hoping and I will let you know tomorrow how I got on with that one but for now I'm just gonna bask in the glory of how much I love this book but also I need to go and do lots of tidying because family are coming around tomorrow and my house is a mess <laughs> I will report back later Saturday and today is early Christmas our festive soiree which basically means that I put out a giant table of mainly beige party food and we celebrate Christmas early with our family and oh it's been a day I'm absolutely exhausted from hosting and catching up with everybody and really <laughs> really tiring um but it was such a lovely day and I took like no photos of anybody because I'm terrible for not doing that and I keep saying every year I will take photos of people and then I don't so note to self note to self take photos of loved ones at events um I apologize if you can hear the cat he is licking himself like directly behind my camera um but he's so cute so anyway enough about next door's cat who is in my house um I finished a second book today which is Right to Remain Silent by Nikki Bell the book that I forgot the title of yesterday because oh I was just overwhelmed and I didn't realize at the time that this was going to be my 200th book of the year. I only noticed when I'd already logged it on Goodreads and Storygraph and checked you know what book number the shadow glass was and realized oh this is book 200 so ah so much pressure and I have to say I really enjoyed it. I thought it was just so cute. It was so cute. It was a second chance romance novella, really short, only 50-ish pages. So I read a bit of it last night, finished it off this morning and I cried. So what I want from a romance is I don't want it to be believable usually. <laughs> I want it to just be I want my happy endings. I want characters to just fall in love and everything to go well. Maybe a misunderstanding to occur. And I really like this book. It took place in a police station over Christmas and it included dressing up as Santa, putting on an event for children and it was just such a fun light-hearted romance. And I really liked the two characters reuniting after a decade apart and realising that, you know, maybe it was time to have a second chance and I just, it gave me the warm and fuzzies. And this is the second book in, it's not a series per se, but it's a Scottish romance sort of collection. And the characters from the first book were mentioned in this book. And I was so happy to see how they had gotten on but I'm so happy to have read a lovely little cheeky romance and it, there wasn't any spicy scenes in this and that's okay that's fine it but it was a heartwarming romance and I was rooting for the characters from the beginning so I'm gonna say that my 200th book was a success and I'm absolutely delighted. I kind of wished I would have known that I was coming up to book 200 and I could have done, I don't know, some sort of fanfare. I feel like I should have had a fanfare, but I didn't. Instead, I just read a really enjoyable romance that gave me the warm and fuzzies and made me cry when there was a serenade because I think every book, maybe, maybe every romance needs a serenade scene that's something to think about. So just a teeny little update for me because I'm knackered. I am going to go and tidy up what needs to be tidied up but mainly 
I'm just going, going to go and relax and enjoy my evening. <laughs> Thank you so much for watching.